Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Coffee is for Closers. Hello. It's Matt. And, and Pat. Pat. <laughs> We're back. Uh, Roll the intro or whatever happens. Ex-Special Forces Sniper turned entrepreneur. I've scaled numerous businesses to eight figures. My name is Matt Ryder. This is my podcast and I'm telling you to put that coffee down. down. Is this still an intro? I think so. Anyway. I don't watch this podcast. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk down to the audience like that. I, I, I listen to Joe Rogan. Yeah. That's why I have that. Oh, my my cold punch gets here this week. Oh, snap a doo Oh, oh baby. Exciting. Gonna put on a little bit of Andrew Huberman. Have take you my athletic greens? Have you been no. in a cold punch? So no. to to clarify, what did you spend? Ah, it's not important. Okay, so a large amount of money. I think it was. I think it was over ten thousand dollars. Okay, so more than ten thousand dollars <laughs> on a cold plunge. Never having been in a cold plunge. But I mean, like, I don't need to get slapped in the face to know I don't like it. Yeah, I'm not going to enjoy it, no. but I'm going to do it. Okay, at least once. At least one time. Yeah, I mean, one time for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to do it. Okay, I like do the sauna. Yeah, I like that every day. Every day. Every day. I like it. Yeah. So I'm into. I'm trying to live forever. You know? Yeah. With I mean, my high level of income and advanced to modern sciences? Yeah, it's 234, un- 240. It's not unreasonable to think you could reach that. Not unreasonable. So, um, interesting thing happened today. Yeah, well, this last couple of days. Yeah. China has said they're not going to use the US dollar as their reserve currency anymore. What does that mean? So, a reserve currency, Pat, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Is the currency that everybody agrees is the underlying currency of choice mm-hmm. for international trade. Mm-hmm. So, it was the gold standard, mm-hmm. like for a while. And then we got rid of the gold standard. And then we had- When did that happen? That was like a 70s thing, wasn't it? Uh, no. So the gold standard was for oil for a long time, but like the like the reserve currency was the pound. Right. Okay. Until 1945, 46. Right. So shortly after like fucking US came in and sort of established themselves as a global superpower. Yeah. So it was for a long time, it was the, it was the pound. For about a hundred years, it was that. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it was before that. Um, but, but I I did some research into it. So it's interesting. So every hundred years it changes. Right. Okay. Um, and you can literally, it's been going, doing that for like a thousand years. Right. Uh, and you can watch the events unfold. It's the same events every time. Really? Yeah. So it's like, there's a book on it. I'll try and remember what the book was, but basically what happens is, um, that they start, uh, uh, governments have two options when they get into debt, right? They can either default or print more money. Mm Mm-hmm. Obviously, they print more money because mm-hmm. defaulting sucks. So as soon as they start to do that, then the underlying asset becomes less less valuable. Mm-hmm. Um, and then other countries start to eat the inflation mm-hmm. because now they're having to spend more U.S. dollar. But the U.S. dollar doesn't necessarily massively go down in value and compared to theirs. So like it stops people like me and you wanting to buy from U.S. websites because mm-hmm. we're paying just way over even though the u.s used to be cheaper when you go to the u.s and you can buy stuff now it's like oh i'm better off buying this at home yeah you go to lululemon it's 80 bucks u.s for some tights Mm -hmm. you go here it's 90 bucks australian for tights you're like well might as well just buy it from australia like there's no benefit to me anymore yeah so that starts to happen and then from there like the reserves of all the countries they start to hold less usd Mm -hmm. and so you can see like there's a dramatic decline in 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 foreign uh in, in foreign governments holding USD. Mm-hmm. It's been declining for like two years, pretty substantially. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's not great. And then from there, uh, other, other, other like countries will then say, well, you can use our currency and then it'll like a, a minor amount of things will happen. Like sort of Ecuador pulled out a while ago, they use Bitcoin, right? And then um, there's like a, a Russian, Brazilian, it's called like br- uh, BRICS. Okay. So it's like Brazil, Russia, IT, CA, whatever. I, I can't fucking remember all the countries, but the BRICS mm-hmm. countries use their own currency in between each other mm-hmm. to sort of cut out the US because they were having to like, you know, buy US dollar and then, so they could trade with each other in US dollar, but they're all independent. Like they yeah, don't yeah. need the US dollar. Yep. And then, um, I mean, that's why Gaddafi was killed, right? Because Gaddafi tried to bring oil back to the gold standard. Mm-hmm. So they killed him. Mm-hmm. And Hillary Clinton laughed about it yeah. on a on an interview. And now there's a live slave trade in Libya. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, people got to go. I get it. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, so that's why they killed him. So Xi Jinping has been working in the background, I guess, with a bunch of different countries. And now, like, I think Russia um, and Brazil have agreed to trade, have their reserve currency be the 
Chinese Huan. Mm. But like, I, like I don't think it's anything to worry about. No. Well, I mean, like China's economy is collapsing anyway. Yeah. You know, so like to me, it's like that's a good move for them to be more insular, mm -hmm. work on their own shit. Mm -hmm. You know, get out of get out of the way. You know, and with the state of government bonds in the U.S. and interest rates and how the so they, they've had three major. The U.S. has had three huge economic things happen recently, right? The first was um, the first was the uh, 2008 financial crisis. Mm -hmm. That was huge. So the government had to do a mass bailout of their entire economy. Mm -hmm. The second was the um, was uh, what was the first one? I can't. There's been three. The, I can't remember what the first one was. The second one was the 2008 bailout. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. The dot-com bubble. Okay. Dot-com bubble was number one. Huge dot-com bubble. Everything fucking burst. That was in like the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Then 2008, there was the basically all the subprime lending crisis mm -hmm. and Enron and all those dudes. And then it was COVID. All right. So they've had three huge traumatic events to their economy. Mm -hmm. And that's just made every the US dollar incredibly unstable. They've printed trillions and trillions of dollars. I think the stat is like, more money's been printed in the last 18 months than ever has been printed ever combined. Really? Yeah. Do they, um, like, when they put more money into the economy in the US, they actually physically print more money? Is that how they do it? Because, like, in Australia, I know that we just spend money into existence, right? So, like, yeah. we give it away to people or we, you know, create infrastructure projects and that kind of stuff yeah. that the government creates money to pay for these new things. Yeah, we, so I think there has to be a ratio of real to right. pretend. Right. Okay. Because you can't have like, you have to have, like, we, we do fractional lending, but you can't have like no paper yeah, yeah. lying around, you know? But like, you know, there's so much US dollar out in the ether. Yeah. That's out of the US. Yeah. So maybe it's in a good In shipping containers in Colombia. Exactly. Like buried, you know, <laughs> <laughs> buried by drug dealers. Yeah. So I don't, like it's usually, according to this thing that I read, it's like a 30 year transition usually. Okay. And this is year 80. Right of it being a U.S. reserve currency. Okay. So it'll be interesting to see. So it should last another 20 years as the reserve currency. Then they'll, and it's starting to shift. And according to this, this paradigm, it's like, it's, it's like fucking clockwork. Yeah. Right. Like it works the same every single time. And you can see like what happens. There's like a prosperous, there's a buildup. Yeah. Right. And then there's peace, like world peace. Mm -hmm. So after this shoot, so there always has to be like a catastrophic period, right? Which is World War II that saw the shift away from the pound and towards the US dollar. Mm -hmm. Then from there, there was like a prosperous period, mm -hmm. which is the 50s mm -hmm. and 60s, a prosperous period. And then from there, it kind of levels out. Everyone just kind of agrees and then everyone does their trade. Then there's a couple of events or an event that happens with the decline of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, confidence in the currency, mm -hmm. which was COVID. Mm -hmm. So now that's declining. You can just see it. Like people, you know, yeah, banks are going bankrupt and shit like that. A decline... That then begins the rise of the new power. I don't think it's China. Who knows who it will be? That's right? the that's the interesting question, right? Is like, yeah. yes, America is definitely sort of on its way out as the leading superpower. Yeah. But China also have hit like a, a ceiling, right? And they're yeah. because of the uh, pop the population pyramid problem that they have. Every like a lot of uh, countries have that bad, but not as bad as China. Like we certainly have that here, right? Like yeah. all the boomers, um, you know, retiring and and yeah being very expensive people to keep around and yeah, there's not yeah. enough young people to pay for that. But in China, they have that much, much worse, right? Yeah, that one child policy killed them. Yeah, so that's caught up with them now. Um, and like I saw that guy, I can't remember, Peter something or other talking about how they're probably like in 10 years, it's going to like significantly collapse within China. Um, China's in a bad spot. Yeah, like yeah. half of them probably starve to death in the yeah, next 10 years. Trillions and trillions of dollars in of mortgages that just got wiped and like a, rev a class revolt and... Yeah, they don't have enough food. They don't have water and other medication. And, and it's hard to know what really is going on in China. Well, right? they reckon that they've they, no one even knows how many people out there. Yeah, because everything is just false, fake reporting. Yeah, nobody knows. Yeah, it's just we just okay. I guess this is what it is. Yeah, you know there could be a billion of them. There could be five hundred million of them. There's nobody to know. Yeah, that's you know? so wild. <laughs> so wild. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's it's super interesting. But and then it says it's like there's like a slow and steady kind of like gradual. I mean, it obviously didn't affect England too badly. Yeah. You know, they were the superpower. No, they're not, mm -hmm. you know. So it goes down. So it'll take another 20 years for that to happen. Then it's 30 years for the adaptation of a new reserve currency. Mm -hmm. And maybe it just goes back to gold. Yeah. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Gold. You know? uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> That's yeah. the way to go. Exactly. Can so protect ma- it with a gun. Exactly. Maybe yeah. it just goes back to that. Yeah. You know, who knows? So no one country is responsible for the reserve currency. It's just gold is the underlying asset and everyone has to have their amount of gold. And then we're just trading on parts of gold. Yeah. You know? I like it. I don't mind it. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it won't be great for the world. <laughs> Everyone's out there just scraping away trying to find more gold. But how's this going to affect, um, like, sales industry? I just think, like, it'll. It's just the reason why we talk about it is because, like, I think if you have no idea what's going on, you're going to get these objections. Mm -hmm. So, like, you have to have some sort of background, look into it, and not just be like, "What do you mean?" Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm just not really sure about the economy right now. There's a lot of things happening with China and this and this. You're going to be like, "Yeah, like that." So, so so walk us through that. Give us that. Give us that. So like I'm buying a, you've got me on the call. I'm buying your, like let's, it, it's NEPQ, right? So yeah. like I'm, I'm, you're selling and I'm like, oh, it's, it's a weird time to be spending that much money, man. Like who knows what's going on with like the whole, whole America. It's not even going to be the gold, the US dollar is not even the global currency anymore. I don't, I don't know if I can handle this. Yeah. So I think the, I think the, you know, the important thing is you got to find out like what's the underlying, you know, and the underlying thing is like fear, time, whatever it may be. So, but if you have an understanding of the situation that's going on, you know, for sales training, it's great. Because mm-hmm. the more economic uncertainty there is, the more people buy sales training. Yeah, right. Because, like, it's the one thing. Well, if you're better at it. Yeah. You know, it's usually if you're better, if you're worse at sales. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, so it's good. Like, because what happens is the laydowns go away. Yeah. So if you're, if you're relying on laydowns right now, it's like goodbye, mm-hmm. you know? So as more random things start stacking onto each other, um, and as we get closer to the impending apocalypse or whatever is about to happen, you know, it's got to be something. Zombies has got to be next. Who knows? Aliens. It could be aliens. Right? I think it's aliens. Yeah. So if I'm if I'm writing the story, it's probably aliens. Yeah. You know. Did you see that video about the glitch in the Matrix? No. Oh, bro, the lemon. No. Oh man, what? fully blown glitch in the Matrix. Right. So there's CCTV footage, and it's like pretty good. It's good quality CCTV. And this girl's working at a fucking Jamba Juice or something, and she's cutting lemons. Right, she cuts the lemon into four. You clearly see her cut it into four. Right, she goes one. You can see the whole thing. She goes, she breaches around to get the bag, and then she picks it up, and it's only cut in half. <laughs> she looks at it like she, and you see this fucking little twitch, right? Instead of like like that, there's a little tiny twitch of this lemon in the in the footage, and it's back to like it's one, it's two quarters and one half. Yeah, right. And it, she's looking at it, and she's like. What the fuck is this? So she cuts it again, puts it in the bag. But like, you clearly see her cut it. Like it's no, there's no, I mean, it's, she's so confused by what's happening. She's like, ding, 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 ding. And then her, like, you just look at her and just go like, what? <laughs> like that. And it's like, it's going viral and it's like the matrix glitched. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the matrix, Tate's out. Yeah, so that's interesting, right? Like, yeah. that's that's deep within the coaching and consulting space. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's what's going to happen there? Is he going to run away from Romania, you reckon? I don't know, but I reckon that now he's going to have a goddamn superpower yeah. worth of PR. Yeah. Wrongfully imprisoned, straight up. Like, yeah. they had no evidence. Yeah. He did shit. Yeah. Kept him in prison for four months. Yeah. Four or five months without charge, without anything. Mm-hmm. And then basically they just, okay, we have nothing. Mm-hmm. You know? And so he's jacked too. Apparently he was doing like 7,000 push-ups a day. What else he did? Some shit is all he did. He just sat there. He's like, I just read the Quran and did push-ups. That's what he said. Read the Quran. And did, yeah, he's a Muslim. Pretty devout Muslim. Is he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. He doesn't drink during that shit. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. So, um, but yeah, so that's pretty interesting. But yeah, it's a weird time, man. Yeah. There's so much weirdness going on. Trump got indicted. You know, if I was Clinton, I'd be fucking worried, bro. Yeah. I get indicted years after the fact for paying off chicks that are fucked. Yeah. If I was Bill Clinton, I'd be really, really worried because now it's like, well, obviously we're going to go after you. Why? Why do you think they go after him? Well, because like the the, the Blues have now attacked. It's a, it's a ridiculous thing to indict an ex-president for, yeah. especially since like the statute of limitations is gone. Yeah. So they had to, so it's a misdemeanor. Mm-hmm. Statute of limitations is seven years. Mm-hmm. It was more than seven years ago. So the guy had to somehow gymnastics it into a campaign finance violation, which it's not. Okay. 
it's just clearly not. Like two DAs have looked at it in the past and gone, there's nothing we can do here. And they they really wanted to get him. Yeah. So like it's going to get torn down in the courts, but now it's like, okay, you set the precedent that we can go after ex-presidents for paying off chicks that we fucked. Let's have a look at how many Bill Clinton paid off, shall we? Yeah, yeah. You know, and let's, let's go. Let's get him. Campaign finance. Let's go. Yeah. You know, so it, it's opening up a, a, a fucking a treasure trove, a wormhole of craziness. Mm-hmm. Um, that I hope the Republicans would be big enough to not go after, but I seriously doubt that's going to be the case. No, they have to. But I think the problem then is finding, like, the the Republican Party can want to do it, but having, the like, a prosecutor that will, will come to the party on that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty. Yeah, okay. everyone, everyone, everyone wants their day in the sun. Yeah. You know? But those Clintons don't mind just, like... Yeah. Murdering might, people. You might just go on a little but fishing trip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you might just commit suicide. Who is that guy that shot himself in the back of the head three times in the park? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was, yeah. yeah. Tied himself up and shot himself dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a clear case of suicide here. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Shot himself in the back of the head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, people do it. Yeah, it's a weird <laughs> time. Um, I... I, I wonder how long the whole thing can keep it together while there's so like you see at the moment, especially in the US, there's so much like overt nonsense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like that. You just got to wonder how long people can be like, Oh, let's just continue to go along with this. Yeah. Or whether it's going to be a sort of pseudo nonviolent civil war. Yeah. A secession of East and West or North or South or something like that. Yeah. yeah I can't imagine like it's basically, it's basically like Europe at the moment. That's the thing about the U.S. is that it's the United States, but it's so disjointed. I mean, yeah. as someone who runs a business over there, man, it's a nightmare. Every single state has completely different laws and policies. Mm-hmm. So, and like, there's, there's no like, uh, you know, like we hired someone in New York. All right, now we have a W-2 in New York. So now we have to go and file um, a set of documentation with the governor general of New York right, or whatever the fuck it's, Congress, whatever it is over there, that we have a full-time employee. We have to get the New York regulations as to how we can treat that person because, like, we can't fire that person the same way that we can fire someone in Arizona. Okay. We also have to give them different benefits. We have to give them different amounts of leave, different amount of leeway, different work hours, different wage requirements. Um, and then, like, the paperwork is totally different. And it has to be filed. It's oh, totally independent. Mm. And then you've got federal on top. So, like, it's a pretend United States. They're not yeah. united in any particular way except for they have a flag. Yeah. Everything else is totally different. Yeah. It's, like, it's it really is very similar to Europe where you've got, like, the Czech yeah. Republic, you know, and you've got fucking whatever. Yeah. You know? um, and, and that person that's in New York, they uh, work, like, they're working in New York, but in a business that's in Arizona. It's just what, because they're going to work But we're a Delaware company, you know? So, it's like we're a Delaware company. That trades in Arizona with a foreign business license. That's what it's called. It's a foreign business license, um, which I guarantee you, your business doesn't have. Um, but should. It should. Yeah, you're yeah. supposed to have it. Not many people do get it, but like, because it's one of those things, you know, but like, you know, like if you're, if if the headquarters staff is in Arizona, like you need to have a foreign business license. Okay. Um, but it's not like a well-known thing that you have to get. Because again, like there's no fucking, like unless you have all the insurances, like I, we only found all this stuff out because we have a, a suite of insurances. And so like, cause we have every insurance that we require and do business safely. Um, but there, those insurances have requirements. So you need to have all these things. It's like, Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. You have to have that. It's like, well, where, where does it say that? And then I was like, man, if only there was a handbook or a course that you could do on how to run a, you know, 50, hundred million dollar year company. It's like, well, why would anyone put, why would anyone bother mm. anyone who's done it? can't be bothered yeah. know, writing a course about it yeah and it'd be so boring yeah that nobody and it's super not, niche. nothing sexy about it whatsoever yeah yeah you know you charge a fortune but good luck selling that yeah i know right it's like we can talk to <laughs> like we, we, had, we had a guy that came to us with a project once and he wanted to teach business owners how to ipo uh-huh and i was like there's no market for this man yeah it's like nah it's an ipo i was like yeah i'm sure you're really good at it but i was like how like who are we gonna sell yeah Anyone, like, what are you going to do? Teach some fucking $3 million a year coach how to IPO? Like, there's no, no, there's no market for that. And anyone who is big enough, too, will have a team, and they'll hire lawyers, and they'll hire consultants to do it for them. Yeah. Because they don't want to fuck it up. Yeah. So, like, why would you bother doing that yourself? It just seems like a waste of time. Yeah. You know? How many times had he done it in order to be able to- He had helped, like, 16 different companies IPO. Okay. As a consultant, which is the way it should be done. Yeah, you exactly. <laughs> like- 
Yeah. Like I'm sure he got, you know, sh- stock options and shit and that's how he made a lot of his money. Yeah. You know, and then he helps with the raises and all that kind of stuff. Um, of all the people that like have come to you to do sales, what's the weirdest? Oh man, there's been a ton of them. Like golf cart flipping. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Teaching people how to flip golf carts. Um, another so, one is so like that's trucking. a course. That's an online course. Yeah. That people can pay. Do you remember the price of it? It was five grand. Five grand. <laughs> To learn how to flip golf carts. Yeah, yeah. And what, like you're sourcing them somewhere. Yeah. Well, I guess you got to pay the course. You got to pay five grand. No, exactly, man. Now, exactly. Now gonna, you're interested. How now am I, I going to I got, I got, I got, I got. leave without finding that out? Yeah, I think trucking automation was a really odd one. Okay. So trucking automation is like, basically you like, you just syndicate buy a truck, mm-hmm. like a you know, big rig. And they're cheap in the States. I mean, you can get a fucking big rig for 80 grand. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? The really new high fancy ones are like two fifty, but they're shockingly cheap. Okay. Like I was like, Oh, these are I, I thought they'd be million dollars plus yeah. for a eighteen wheeler, but they're not, right? Mm-hmm. So anyway, you syndicate buy it and then whack a driver in there and take a percentage of the profits, you know? So you own one tenth of a truck. Yeah. I was like, that's just a strange business model. Yeah. Oh, the other ones like ATMs, people will teach you how to do ATM businesses. Mm-hmm. Actually a good business. Yeah. It's just if you can get in the right places. Um, that's the tricky part of ATMs. I've known some people that do that. Yeah. That they, it's very location based. Yeah. And, and yeah. they move them. Like if there's the, if the ATM isn't hitting the KPIs, it's, it's, they move them fast. Yeah. Like they chase the, in and out, in and out. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you gotta put a lot of money into them. Yeah. Literally. You know, literally. But I think you gotta have 15 to 20 grand in an ATM at any one time to make it worth your while. Yeah, Otherwise right. you gotta refill it all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, a lot of automation, like YouTube automation. That's a very interesting one. Because people pull it off, mm-hmm. you know? You know those, like, voiceover tech shows? Yeah. Voiceover, it's up, sad, and you're going to go and see. Like, those things fucking make money, man. Like, yeah. they're a long game. You're going to pay anywhere from forty to 60000 for them to set up, like, they usually used to do, like, three different ones with three different niches, and they kind of see what works. Mm-hmm. But they build them up to, like, you know, ten to 15 k a month passive incomes within, like, probably 18 months to two years. Yeah, right. It's not bad. So that's a course that someone sells on how no, to do they that. Do, a lot of it's done for you. Yeah. So they'll do it with you, and then they do, like, an 80-20 profit split. So essentially they're getting people to finance the first six to eight months of it. You know what I mean? And and, and sort of get it all set up. And then from there they, they go off to the races. I know a couple of companies that do it quite well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a really interesting one because YouTube's so hard, mm. you know, and some of them are like celebrity based, like the one celebrity, like the Chris Pratt channel. Right. It's like fucking all things Chris Pratt daily video. Yeah. You know? And, and, and so they'll just hit and they'll just fucking go for it. A ton of it's tech, mm-hmm. you know, golf, just travel, luxury. Yeah. All kinds of shit. That, that YouTube like rabbit hole is enormous. Like to, it, it really becomes even difficult to fathom the amount of content and the amount of niches within YouTube, right? Yeah. Like, you know, when you, you, you watch something and then suddenly that's your whole feed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I can't believe how much information there is on this, this niche topic. Of like, Chris I mean, Pratt. just the sounds of different uh, keyboards. Yeah. There's, there's mil- there's views with a hundred million views. Yeah. On ASMR like- stuff. Yeah. 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 So like just random shit like that. I'm in like a woodworking loop at the moment. Yeah. Right. John Malecki. We, um, so Rip's, you know, crazy into Pokemon, right? So yeah. like he's been watching these Pokemon videos. There's this guy who just un, un, like opens Pokemon packets. Yeah. And like, oh, I got this one. Like, and 200 million. Is it Lionheart? <laughs> Some other guy. Uh, Lionheart. This guy has like the most techno colored background. It's perfect for children. Yeah. Oh, this guy's got a similar sort of yeah. thing. And he just opens Pokemon cards. Yeah. And Rip like loves it. Loses his fucking mind. Yeah. He got another one. Yeah. He got a bag of Joe. Yeah. Yeah, they love it. It's just so like, YouTube is so niche. Yeah. Um, I don't really, I don't watch almost any normal television. No. My- I watch YouTube, I watch a ton of basketball, and then like some shows on yeah. Disney and Netflix. The only show that's on Fred Air TV that we watch, and it's my dirty secret, can't believe I'm going to say this out loud, is Maths. Cause oh, yeah. That's great. It's no runner. Yeah. yeah. We watch maths as well. So I think one of the scary things of maths is that, um, like, obviously there's- Married at first sight for those Americans. Yeah. They've got it. They've got uh, married at first sight. Uh, oh, there's two types of people that do it, right? There's people who, like, want Instagram followers, and there's people who really are looking to, you know, develop a life partner. And when they put two of the Instagram follower people together, 
It's great. That's what makes the show, it's right? Because those people quickly identify with each other. Oh, you're a fuckwit too, right? Like we <laughs> just have these arguments. We'll be ridiculous, yeah. but we'll we'll ride this out. Like we'll make up it every week and and choose to continue to stay together because we have to stay on the show to increase our popularity, right? Yeah. And then you get people who, when they put one of these Instagram assholes with a normal person, really quickly that normal person is like, oh. Jerks paired me with one of these yeah, dickheads, yeah. right? Like I'm out. You of know here. the you know the guy lost his license to be a psychologist. Yeah, yeah, the guy because what he did is so what that show is so harmful to people's mental health. Oh, for sure. And they're like fully puppet mastering people, and they're intentionally doing all that. So they they the Australian board pulled his license. Yeah, well, fair enough. Fair Good. enough. He's a fucking dirtbag. Yeah, but I mean, great show. But so imagine you uh, like so if the put two Instagram assholes go together, no problem. Yeah. Right? they know what they're there for. You get one Instagram asshole and one normal person. They pull, they pull the pin. Nobody gets famous. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. But imagine you like meet someone on that show and you're like, I'm really here for good reasons. And you think maybe they are too. And you're like, hit it off. But towards the end, you start to think, what if they're one of these Instagram assholes? And they're just waiting for the big reveal of what a weirdo they well, are. You know the how the US Bachelor works? No. They get to choose at the end between the guy or the money. Really? Yeah, that's how they... <laughs> so like the, the whole the real contentious part about the u.s bachelor is that you don't know who's there for real yeah so you know how they always say like basically in the in the australian one it's like oh you're here for instagram followers but there's like a you know it's him or 50 grand cash yeah yeah Which one? <laughs> well you take the 50 grand of course you do and they didn't meet up with them later yeah, I mean, yeah. Why not? Just do you're, that? An, you're an idiot if you why don't not do just, that. Yeah, you're like, oh no, I don't choose you. Yeah. See, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll take the money. Be terrible if you texted me after I, we get this yeah. money and we both get run off with this holiday. money. <laughs> be a terrible holiday, wouldn't that be? Yeah, I love those horrendous shows, though. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just like shows that I don't like anything that's sad or stressful. Yeah, fair just enough. Don't, don't need it in my no. life. I got enough, enough of that. stress. I got enough stress in my life. I don't need to watch like my Sammy tried to give me to watch Wednesday. Oh yeah. I was like, nah, I watched the first. I was like, nah, too stressful. I don't yeah. want to borrow it. Yeah. And also like part of having ADHD is you have a high level of prediction as to the, as what happens. It's like a common thread and I can predict nearly anything in a movie that happens. Okay. I'm like, as soon as I see like, did you say the sixth sense? Did you say that coming? Uh, I don't remember, but it's the biggest twist ever. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I don't think I did see that coming. Yeah. Okay. Like, Cause I don't think anyone really, anyone yeah, who yeah. says they saw that coming, it's probably full of shit. The guy's dead the whole time. Yeah, like, yeah. what are you, but like, I'll usually be able to go, like we watched a movie, the new murder mystery movie. Okay. Um, it's on Netflix with uh, Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. And I immediately, they did, they focused on one thing for like half a second. And I immediately went, Ugh, I knew everything that was about to happen. <laughs> like, it, was, it was like, they just focused on a thing. And I was like, okay. And then I was like, well, that's down. That that's the murder weapon. And then this is how it's going to happen. This is why they focused on it. And they said, da, 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 da. it's like a pattern recognition because they know how they did. You just see the patterns within film. Mm -hmm. And so you just go, okay, I know everything that's going to happen. And mm -hmm. I went to talk and somebody goes, don't you fucking say it. <laughs> She's like, if you figured out what's about to happen, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll be quiet. Like that, Cause I just ruined it all for her. So now I know to stay in my lane, just be quiet. Yeah. But yeah. How much do you think of that actually transfers to your sales? Like oh, you, probably heaps. Yeah. yeah. Really good at patterns. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. you reckon that you like very often you see the objections coming from people like long before they come and you then sort of pre handle it before it comes out. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I never put the two and two together, but yeah, it probably is. I like, you can see it, you know, you can just sort of, someone says something, you know, and, and it's like the, they're emphasizing a word, which is like, you know, it, it sort of takes away their own responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, a sales guy starts just really casually going, Oh, you know, I'm doing this, this and this, but you know, the lead quality hasn't been great lately. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Like that's a pattern. Yeah. You know, and then if it happens one more time, you're like, oh, okay, that's not by accident. That's that person sort of, so now we have to, to work towards getting rid of that. You know, I think a lot of people would call it like a limiting belief or whatever. Mm -hmm. I just think it's sort of like, oh, it's just a pattern that they've, they've used to justify their own failure. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So if you can identify that early, it just makes it way easier because then you can like in your process, you know, you're going to have different options to, to you and like how you would and how you would, um, emphasize one thing or another or if you take it down the left or right and if you go like well traditionally what i've seen is that people that present with this pattern if i go this way i get a better outcome mm -hmm. so it's just pattern same as what you would with dogs you yeah, know? yeah. Oh, i've seen that i've seen that before yeah you just learn to read it yeah so it's yeah. just it's just reading and i think people are super predictable yeah you know so if you can if you can just listen to them really well then you can sort of go oh, okay i know where this guy's going with this mm. and then it becomes quite simple sales is really easy 
Mm. Like people overcomplicate it. They make it so much harder than what it has to be because then they put so much pressure on themselves to be really good at it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's not that difficult. Like to be really good at it is really difficult because to be really good at anything is super difficult, whether it's weightlifting, fucking using chopsticks, whatever. Yeah. Right. But to be like pretty good at it, it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. It's just got to like, you just got to like actually do some work on it. Yeah. You know, the amount of salespeople that I see like, oh, what are you working on? I'm getting better. Like, cool, bro. <laughs> like, I mean, it just seems so ridiculous. Yeah. You know, you can't, every now and then someone comes in and they're like, I'm working on this. You're like, cool. Why are you working on that? For these reasons. Perfect. Keep doing that, man. Yeah. You'll be fine. Yeah. You know, you see so many people just kind of like, if you go to the, like, so one thing I learned in fitness was like, uh, when I was getting coached by a guy called Charles Poliquin, he's, he, he passed away a few years ago, but he said like, if you want to get better in exercise, it's your first exercise and your first workout of the week. Mm -hmm. So it's your A1 of your, you know, of your first day. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you're going to get better at bench press. Monday, your first exercise is bench press. And that sets the emphasis for the entire week. Mm -hmm. You know, so that is your main lift. So like you can't rotate between like squat, deadlift and bench because you're just not going to get that good at any of them. It's like, that's your focus. That's what you're working on. So if that's your focus, that's your first exercise and you build out your entire workout around being better at bench. So you figure out what you're bad at or is it your rotators? Is it like your triceps are really weak? So you can't lock out. If you can't lock out, it's because you got weak triceps, right? So mm -hmm. it's like you work on your bench as your first and then all your supplementals might be tricep based. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you mm -hmm. sort of hit that side. And then from there, like you're actually kind of doing something productive instead yeah. of just of all around. the, like you've trained a ton of salespeople, what do you reckon is the most common uh, mistake that they make? Um, well, I want to say not listening. Not listening to the prospect. The prospect and yeah. Like, so they're just like, I've got my script. We do the you talk, I talk. I don't listen to what you say. I just, you, you, you go ahead and talk. I'll be preparing my next thing regardless yeah. of what you said. Yeah, when you can hear someone's internal monologue, mm -hmm. you know, like someone says, oh, yeah, my father passed away, and they go, okay, perfect, perfect, great. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it happens a lot. Yeah. You know, it sounds so crazy when you say it like that, but it happens a lot. Yeah. And it's just people not listening. Okay. You know, that's a, it's a hard, it's a hard skill to get. Yeah. To, like, turn your mind off. So, like, when I do a sale, I have to, like, turn everything off. I have to, like, put my watch on silent, my phone on silent, turn it over, Make sure that all my notifications are off. Facebook, Slack, Instagram, fucking YouTube. Mm -hmm. e email everything. Everything is off. So, like, I'm not distracted by it because I'm super easily distracted. So, mm -hmm. and then I can just sit there in the conversation. And the only thing I have is, like, the script and the person. And I don't have to read the script because I've memorized it. But it's there to provide me with a guide and reference. If I feel like I'm a little bit off track, I can just look at it and know exactly where I am. And I'm yeah. like, okay, sweet. And because I know what I'm supposed to get out of each phase and each question, it's like I can just sit back and relax and I can just be a part of the conversation. Yeah. And so then people are like... You can actually engage with the person. Yeah, and like they feel like you're listening. Yeah. You know, people don't want to tell deep, dark secrets to people who they think don't really care. Yeah. You know? I, I, I agree with that. I think that I've seen like, you know, no, I've been in the sales process enough where I think I told you recently I... I um, I was buying something and I could, I've never noticed it before because I was never in the industry, but having worked here, I could tell, I could tell the guy was reading a script. I could. Yeah. And, and at one point we were having this conversation. It was like, he did like a two call kind of thing, but he must, he was driving the first time and like, he didn't have the script and it kind of fell apart. And I, I was like, it was, I was going to buy, I was a committed buyer before the phone call, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I just kind of let it play out. Cause I was like, this is interesting to me now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he didn't have the script and I could tell it kind of fell apart. So then he then was like, oh, I need to call you back. And then when he had the script, it was very much the same. It was like, I could, I could feel him working through the whole thing. And yeah, it yeah. didn't really matter what I said. It was like, I was like, aha, uh -huh, yep. And and I gave some objections just because I was just <laughs> curious. Right? I was just like, how will this be handled? Yeah. I almost wanted to then like re-pitch to him like, hey, you could get sales training from this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I could feel that he just had a process. He was working through it. It didn't matter what I said. Yeah, I got a call from uh Sabi Subray's sales team. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause I bought that book in 2019. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, follow up is. Yeah. I mean, longer. obviously like I'm going to be nice and say, this is probably a new guy. They got the old shit leads. Uh huh. Right. That's what I'm assuming. Yeah. I mean, it was ruthless. Like it was, um, he called me 
It was really like he sounded quite new. I was like, oh, I'll just see what this guy, what he has to say. And it was so scripted and so like uh, the enthusiasm meter was like off the charts. Yeah. And then like, he's like, I just want to start off by saying, are you doing more than $5,000 a month? I said, yeah, a bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're like, so they go, what are you doing? I said, oh, Australian, maybe like four, four and a half million a month. He was like, okay. And then it was like just the same script. And then it was like, we're going to sit down with you with an expert. And we're going to go over how to double your revenue. I was like, but you guys don't even do my revenue. How are you going to double mine? <laughs> and he was like, so we'll do this, this, and this. Sound good? I was like, yeah, sure. He's like, so do you want to do it? I was like, not really. And he just could tell like he had nothing. Yeah. When I said no, he had nothing. It just hit like a dead stop. It was just, he's like, but we're going to do all this for you. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want that. I was like, me on the phone for an hour with some person. Yeah. I, it just doesn't seem super like a great use of my time, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah. But if you want to send me the resources that you said you had, you're more than welcome to send. I'll have a look at them. Yeah. Um, it was just like a so scripted, but you could tell he was new. I was like, oh, I mean, I hope, I hope to God he was new. You know what I mean? Did you um, consider offering him some sales training? Nah, it's just so douchey. You've never done that? Oh, uh, no. With, uh, no, so I had a, a call, I had a sales call with um, Salesforce. Mm -hmm. Worst sales call I've ever had by, by a country mile. If you're listening to Salesforce, your sales fucking sucks, man. They had five people on the call, five sales reps. Wait, for, wait, what is self, Salesforce? Salesforce is, a, is like the biggest CRM in the world. Okay. Billion, billion dollar company, like multi-billions, right? Right. And they're like, a, basically like a, they're a CRM that has like all these bolt-ons. So like you can do everything. You can run coca-cola on, on on it you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it's massive it's the biggest crm um but it like it's a kind of a, it's a lego it's build your own mm -hmm. and like they don't build it for you they don't even have builders you can hire they just have like affiliates right that do all the building um and it was like a, an hour meeting with someone from their marketing cloud team their analytics cloud team their sales cloud team and their data visualization team all of which just asked me completely segmented questions and I was so confused at what was happening. W were they all in the same place? There, three of them were, and two of them were on Zoom elsewhere. But they have like all these different cloud-based plugin products, and then they have Salesforce. And Salesforce by itself is almost nothing. Mm -hmm. So you kind of add all this stuff on, and you get it all built out to sort of customize the whole client journey, integrate with the marketing, everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's like your booking, it's your marketing, it's your everything, right? Which is great because you can get really good data because it all kind of talks to each other. But, and like I was on this call, they all just start sort of firing questions at me. And I was like, I had to tell them on the call, I was like, guys, you got to stop. They're like, huh? And I was like, this is so confusing. And I'm a sales guy. And I just have no idea what you want out of me. It's like, I would tell you the, the problems that I'm having at the moment. And then you see if you can solve them. So they sort of went through and they sort of re hijacked it. And at the end, he goes, yeah, you know, I've sort of been doing some numbers and I think we could probably do it for like 25000 a month, but I'm leaving soon, so I'm pretty incentivized. So if you want, I can do it for like fourteen k a month. <laughs> right? And I was like... I'm leaving soon. Yeah, so I'm pretty incentivized. <laughs> That's what he said. His name is Jack. He's a fucking terrible, terrible sales rep. What does he mean by that? Uh, yeah, I guess, I don't know. Like, right? like I'm leaving the company, so I don't care how much yeah, you I don't buy give a fuck. I just want to get some comps. Yeah. Right. That's basically what he said. And I was like, okay, um, fair enough. I go for what? Yeah. What am I getting for that? No answer whatsoever. So like, I was like, this is ridiculous. And so they emailed us like, oh, we'll get on a call and do this, this and this. And Marco just tore them apart. And it was like, what is the agenda? What is the outcome? What are you looking for? Why do you want my time? Yeah. Uh, that. And then I had them reach out to me again. And I was like, this is the stupidest sales process ever. I goes, this is what Salesforce is. You guys are, I don't know how you've gotten to where you are. You must've just borrowed billions of dollars because this is fucking horrendous. Mm -hmm. It was just so bad. And that's like reflective of all these big companies. They just, sales is like a, an, like an afterthought. Mm. That's why like, I think coaching companies do so well so quick because sales is the forethought. Yeah. You know, it's like, how do we get people in sales, marketing, sales, marketing, sales, marketing. And even though like they're not, great from like a process or data standpoint to thought about we had a we had a company reach out to us a while ago and it's like you know they're an australian company they've borrowed shitloads of money and two of the guys who's starting it were ex-ceos of the big two of the big four banks okay and it's a banking solution for banks mm -hmm. 
So they're selling B2B to large banks and also like the regional banks. They sort of had the big the big four banks covered because they're all friends. So they were like, we can get those, but we really need to make one sale a year of the regional banks, is it? And they were like, oh, I was like, what's your sales? It says, oh, we don't have any. I was like, what salespeople do you have? They go, oh, none of us have background in sales. And like, dude, their budget was like 15 grand mm -hmm. to do the entire sales process from where to go for a company that needs one sale a year. And it's like hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, right. And I was like, I, I didn't even take the call any further because I was so- it doesn't stack up. I was like, you're so stupid. I don't know how to deal with this. Mm. Like, I don't want to negotiate because I'm going to have to charge you hundreds of thousands to do this because like you're asking us to develop basically a whole lead generation strategy because they had no lead generation. So we had to figure out how to cold call them, mm. how to get through the people and then how to get, so we'd have to do it ourselves to figure it out. Yeah. That's how we'd have to do it. So I was like, I was like, so you, you have targets of a couple hundred million dollars a year. Right now you have zero revenue, zero way to get to it. And you think 15K <laughs> is an appropriate budget to get there. They go, yeah, yeah. And we go, I go, okay, all the best for your future endeavors. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not even going to try and handle so this. So do you think that is that they legit had no idea? No idea. Yeah. So they just had no idea what this would cost. And someone just like the good ideas fairy picked out a number. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Which is crazy because like, why? How are you supposed to make the money mm. if you don't? Yeah. You know, or like at least hire a savage for a million dollars a year. Who's done it. Yeah. You know, like go out, go out and do that. But it's just nothing like same with like that other company. We did that FinTech company. I mean, like, you know, they're valued at 5.6 billion. They've done eight rounds of funding and they had no discernible sales process. That was of any, and their only sales training was like product knowledge, you know, and they had, 55 sales reps and it was just crazy. It's like, why aren't you guys thinking of this? I just, mm -hmm. And that's where the whole fucking stupid valuation model comes in. Cause it's like the business, a business that's never turned a profit is worth billions of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I spoke to a guy on the weekend at a kid's birthday party and he was a accountant uh, who has his own M and A firm. So they help like, medium sized businesses kind of sell to private equity firms. So an EBIT of like 10 to 20 million. So EBIT, you know, earnings um, before interest and in taxes. So probably doing a net of like five or six million, right? Mm -hmm. So decent sized companies. And uh, he, he kind of explained to me what they do. And we recently started working with Gym Launch. So Gym Launch has brought us in to like kind of help with a lot of their sales processes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they were bought out. And so I was speaking to Kale, the CEO, and he was kind of telling me some of their targets. And I was like, this is just such a weird way of doing business. But it makes sense now that I've spoken to this guy randomly because his target is EBIT based, not net cash flow, nothing. It's just EBIT based. Mm -hmm. So this guy explained to me and he goes, what they do is they'll come in, they'll value the business and then they'll buy it. And then they immediately aim to triple it. That's their goal is immediate triple. And the way they do that is they just, they, they put debt into it. So instead of having to finance the growth of the company through your profit, you finance it through debt because the interest is a tax deduction. Mm -hmm. So your EBIT, when you're financed through debt, is way higher mm -hmm. because you're deducting all the interest. Mm -hmm. So like that, I was like, oh, that's, I mean, that's pretend. Yeah, yeah. First of all, the, I was yeah. like, oh, we're okay, we're pretending. I yeah. see. And then what they do is they triple it and flip it. Yeah. And, and they haven't actually done anything right like they just injected a bunch of debt they turned the dial up but yeah. like you could do that to seventh level if you put 50 million in debt in seventh level right and we didn't care about the client experience or, or we only sold 2.0 i mean fuck i mean you just turned the tap on so right? what 2.0 is is our is our portal only okay yeah so there's so no if, if, if you just went like let's just ramp everything up to six grand portal only and just ramp out ramp the portal and that's all we sold i mean you could sell everyone mm -hmm. right so if you just went like fuck it let's go we don't want to do that but if you just went like put 20 30 40 million in there and just go like that we just go you'd, we sign up 1800 clients a month you'd sign up 10,000 a month mm -hmm. you know go to different countries all of a sudden the, i mean the business would be fucking flying mm -hmm. but like you couldn't it would fall apart but they don't care because they just want to triple it and then flip it yeah but then the people who they buy it to they want to triple it as well yeah yeah you know, and then so they're going to put more debt in. Yeah. And so, like, it's just a weird sort of Ponzi scheme of debt. Just gets kind of out of control. It's very interesting, though. Yeah. And what what stops you doing that, though? Like, with with Seventh Level, for example, like, all that, say, 50 million you put into it. But they're not buying the whole thing. They're, only, they're buying, like, PE firms only buy, like, 
So like okay. they, they Alex Alex Ramosi sold Gym Launch, but he he still owns thirty three percent of it. Mm-hmm. So he's still yeah, it's so tied to it somewhat, you know. So I'm gonna sell something. I'm gonna sell it. Yeah. Okay. You know, I don't want to then be tied to it because the way that I work is as soon as I want something gone, I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead to you. It's dead to me. So the moment I want to sell seventh, it'll be dead to me. Yeah. And yeah. I want to go. I don't have any intention of selling it, you know, but like, um, I mean, if someone offered me a couple hundred million, I'd be like, bye, adios. Yeah. <laughs> have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. And that would be feasible. So like if someone was to. We could probably sell seventh. I reckon, I reckon net at the end of the year, we could probably sell seventh million for over a hundred million. Okay. So, um, and what could potentially happen would be but. no, but someone say someone come to you and said, "Hey, I'll give you a hundred million dollars for seventh level." Um, sweet. Then they would do like the de- deliverables go to the portal only. They could just ramp the shit out of it and yeah. make ungodly amounts of money. But like that would then fall apart eventually. Do you reckon? Or potentially, if if the product was the, you got to innovate the product all the time. You yeah. Know? So like if you took Jeremy out of it, the thing is, and the, the thing is, if we sold it, Jeremy'd have to go with it. Yeah, he's part of it. It's his IP. You know, so um, well, technically, but it, I mean, legally, no. Yeah, okay, but, yeah, um, yeah. legally, but he's IP. the person. That- yeah, but he's he he is the IP. Like yeah. he's the so like then it would have to be like he'd have to be okay with being sort of tied to a corporate master all the time. You yeah, know? which I don't think would end well. But it's just it's interesting the thought process behind the PE firm coming in and going like, okay, we're going to buy it for 10 times multiple of the EBIT. Fine. And then triple it through debt. It's just such an interesting. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. And I don't know, like if I, I don't know what they were, they were thinking. Anyway, I'll talk about offline anyway. So, um, but yeah, so super interesting. All right. What kinds of weird stuff happen in the world? Everything from salespeople got to be abreast of this stuff. That's right. You don't well, know. I think it is super interesting how, how like up to date with all that shit salespeople have to be to handle the objections when people say, oh, there's a lot going on. If you're like, yeah, that football game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Steph Curry's had 50 last night? Jeez. <laughs> yeah, but it is like, because I think, you know, you're the, the benefit of understanding the world and the economy and all that kind of stuff is that you can predict the objections. If you can predict the objections, you can figure out how you're going to handle them. So then when you do get them, you know, and if it makes you, you're spending that little bit of time get you one extra sale a month or get you a deal that you wouldn't have made. I mean, fucking happy days. Yeah, exactly. You know, so you don't just sound like an idiot on the phone. Anyway. That's it. Bye. Au revoir. Put that coffee down. Down.